Woody Johnson spoke to the media on Thursday. If you're a fan of Woody, you may not like what I have to say, but if you're a Jets fan who's frustrated by ownership, we're going to get into it today on Locked On Jets. You are Locked On Jets, your daily New York Jets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome. This is the Locked On Jets podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Friday, February 9th, 2024, and I'm your host, John B. from gangreennation.com. Thanking you so much for making the show your first listen or first watch every day. Subscribe to the show for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you'll get new episodes as soon as they're posted. If you enjoy the show and are listening on a podcast source, give it a five-star review. And if you're watching on YouTube and enjoy the show, give this episode a big thumbs up. It helps us out and helps other Jets fans find the podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Well, last night, Woody Johnson spoke to the media. We're going to break down what he said on today's show. Woody was at the NFL Honors. It's the award show the NFL now puts on annually. Before the Super Bowl, they hand out all of the awards for the regular season. Uh, you may remember last year, it was actually a pretty big night for the New York Jets because Garrett Wilson and Sauce Gardner won the Offensive and Defensive Rookies of the Year, respectively. This is also the night where they now announce the Hall of Fame class. And last year, Darrell Rivas and Joe Klecko were both selected uh, for the Hall of Fame. So a year ago, NFL Honors was a pretty big event for the New York Jets. You know, in the past, uh, they did not have a big award show. In the past, they used to just, like, announce these through the media. But now the NFL puts on a, a big award show. I guess it's like the NFL version of the Oscars. No news awards-wise award wise from the Jets last night. But plenty of news from the owner who decided to speak to the media heading into the event. And he had quite a bit to say. And I'm going to warn you in advance. If you're a fan of Woody Johnson, if you are a Woody Johnson apologist, you might want to skip this show because you're not going to like what I have to say. Because Woody said some things that raised my eyebrow a little bit. So the most uh, the, the, the thing he said that generated the biggest headlines was about Zach Wilson. He was talking about what happened last year with the New York Jets. And his quote was, we need a backup quarterback. We didn't have one last year. Now, I understand because my first gut reaction to this was probably what your gut reaction was to it. Yeah, Woody's right. Good point, Woody. But then I stepped back for a second and I thought this through and I came to a realization. What Woody's trying to tell you is that you can't blame him for anything that happened. Woody's trying to frame it as though Zach Wilson just fell out of the sky and became the Jets quarterback. You know, opening night. Jets had Aaron Rodgers. That was the plan at quarterback. Then Aaron Rodgers goes down, and Zach Wilson just appeared out of nowhere. Zach Wilson, they had no choice. What could Woody do? There was no other option to back up quarterback. And of course, that's not true. Of course, we spent an entire offseason last year saying that this was not a good idea. The New York Jets traded for Aaron Rodgers because they felt Zach Wilson was not a suitable answer at the quarterback position in 2023. And Despite what Woody's trying to sell you, despite what Woody's trying to sell me, despite what Woody's trying to sell us, Aaron Rodgers is not the first quarterback to get injured in the NFL. A backup quarterback, in my view, might be one of the 10 most important players on your team because we know quarterbacks are the most important spot on the field. And yes, you never want to put a backup quarterback on the field, but you know, there are lots of things you never want to prepare for. That's, you know, if you live day to day, you never want to use insurance, but there's a reason you have it. So yeah, sometimes you get to the off season, people say, why would you spend a lot of money on a quarterback? You hope you never, you hope never plays. Well, the reason for that is what I just mentioned. Why would you spend money on insurance when you hope you never have to use it? Because you know that bad things happen and sometimes you have to use it. You know, and this is what, drives me crazy about the Jets. And now the Jets this offseason are going to head out and they'll probably spend big on a backup quarterback. And I think that's probably the right move. I can't complain when they do. But what I can complain about is this is vintage Woody Johnson. It's vintage New York Jets. Yeah, fine. We can I guess we can give them some credit when they go out and sign a, sign a good backup quarterback this year. But the problem with the Jets is they never address an issue proactively. 
it always the Jets don't address issues until it reaches a crisis point. And last year, the Jets essentially, you know, I don't want to say they threw away a season because there were much, there were other issues on the team. We're actually going to get to that in a little bit. But backup quarterback was an issue. And yeah, during the season, like I, I tried to like offer some context. You know, during the season, I did not go very hard on Zach Wilson at points because there were other issues on the team. But Zach Wilson was not ready to play this year. The Jets admitted Zach Wilson wasn't ready to play. That's why Rodgers was here. And it's not really a second guess. You just said this guy couldn't play. And yet you decided to make him one snap away from being your starting quarterback again. And we're acting like an injury could not have been foreseen. Now, nobody could have foreseen Aaron Rodgers going down four plays into the season. The player, quarterbacks get hurt. I mean, this is the year of the backup quarterback. And instead of addressing this before the season, Jets put themselves left themselves exposed and then I think kind of felt bad for themselves. And if I was to take these comments at face value, it's almost like Woody would be saying, I have nothing to do with the quarterback position on the New York Jets. But we know that's not true. We know one of the biggest reasons Aaron Rodgers is here is Woody Johnson wanted it. We know Woody played a central role in the Jets landing Aaron Rodgers. He went out and personally pitched the Jets to Rodgers, along with Salah and Joe Douglas and Nathaniel Hackett last spring. And Woody took a lot of bows after the Jets traded for Rodgers. I mean, did you follow his social media account last spring after the Jets were able to pull off the Rodgers trade? Did you see all, all of the tweets? Or I don't remember if it was Twitter or X at that point. Did you see all of Woody's social media po posts where, he said, hey, Jets fans, how you feeling today? We got Rodgers. So Woody likes to take credit when things go right. But when things go wrong, I had nothing to do with it. What do you mean? You, you can't blame me. I'm just the owner. I just run the team. I'm just the guy who's in charge of everything. When I hear Woody Johnson call out Zach Wilson, there are a couple other things that come to mind for me. One is that it reminds me a bit. Remember that game late in the season when Alan Lazard more or less called out the coaching staff? He, you know, I don't think he exactly said this, these words, but you got the impression Lazard was saying the team got out coached in the game. And it was true. I mean, on the merits, it was correct. But there's also a sense of, well, what's Lazard done that he should be calling anybody else out? And that's how I feel about Woody, because Woody's the architect. Woody's the owner of the team with the longest playoff drought in North American sports. So, yeah, Zach Wilson played poorly, but, you know, does it really make sense? I mean, is it, is it really fair to, to pound on Zach Wilson when he's down, when you've done an abysmal job as the owner of the team? But beyond that, we know the Jets are trying to trade Zach Wilson. And we know Zach Wilson doesn't have much value, and we know that the stuff only matters on the margins. But, you know, when you're trying to trade a player, Maybe you should not badmouth him. If you're trying to like s talk up a player to other teams, it kind of undercuts the trade talks. If the other GM can say, hey, even your owner said this guy stinks. You know, Woody's not exactly a strategic thinker here. So, you know, while on the merits, what he said was true, I kick it over some of the, the context of what Woody said, because a lot of what he said was really ill-advised on any level. I mean, if you knew that he was a, a problem with backup quarterback, why'd you go into the season with him, Woody? This isn't like me saying this. I had no power. I couldn't do anything. It's not like you saying this. You had no power. You couldn't do anything. This is the owner acting like there was nothing we could do. What did you want us to do? Get a better backup quarterback last year? That was impossible. Why was it impossible? Um, next question. And the next question was about the head coach and general manager of the team. As we continue on this Friday edition of the Locked On Jets podcast, we're going to break down the with the, the statements Woody Johnson graced us with about the head coach and general manager, Joe Douglas and Robert Sala. I have more thoughts. The head here on this Friday edition of Locked On Jets. Today's episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. 
Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Thank you so much for making Lockdown Jets your first listen or first watch every day. A big shout out to you every day. This is a daily podcast covering the New York Jets. We have new episodes each day through the week, Monday through Friday. Bonus episodes as needed as news dictates. You should also know that Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now you can find it on Amazon Fire TV. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus national shows covering every league. Find the Locked On Sports Today channel now on Amazon Fire TV. And today on Locked On Jets, we're breaking down what Woody Johnson said at the NFL Honors Award show last night. I was going to do the show about the Super Bowl, but then Woody decided to grace us with his football insight. Another thing that Woody said, we talked about what he said about Zach Wilson. He made some comments about Robert Sala or Joe, Joe Douglas. He said, I'm not a playoff mandate guy, but we have to do a lot better than seven wins. This is it. We have to produce this year. He also said uh, on Sala and Douglas, the discussions we've had the last couple of months, they've seen me about as mad as I can be. Now, like the thing I said about Zach Wilson, your first gut reaction is probably it. Finally, Woody holding some people accountable. That's great. But then again, you step back and you think this through. And you say, wait, six weeks ago, Woody was making excuses for these guys. It was December 24th. It was Christmas Eve. It was the morning of the day the Jets took on the Washington Commanders and what was not a very entertaining game. Game the Jets were very lucky to win because the Jets did everything in their power to throw it away. Hours after Woody Johnson endorsed his general manager and head coach. So while Woody Johnson's talking big now, we're we're just, what, six, seven weeks removed from Woody Johnson telling the New York Post the following. Just to keep the continuity going with Aaron and and the team we've got, Johnson said as a reason to why he wants Douglas and Salah back. Like I said a year ago, we we need a quarterback. We had a quarterback for four plays. Since then, we haven't been able to replace him. If we have a good quarterback, it makes everyone's job easier. The line better, the receivers better. And I think implied the coaching staff better. So what he's like now talking as though everybody's going to be held accountable when he held nobody accountable at the end of the season for the dismal year the Jets had. Yeah, what are you saying? I was so mad. Well, if you were so mad, why did nothing change? We saw the issues with the coaching staff all season long. We saw the issues with the roster all season long. You're going back to Zach Wilson. All right, fine. If if Woody wants to say, I have nothing to do with Zach Wilson. Well, again, it's not like Zach Wilson fell out of the sky. Your general manager clearly failed. And it's easy to say now, well, we're going to hold people accountable. Why aren't you holding? Why haven't you held anybody accountable now? You have one of the worst offenses on a play-to-play basis in the last 25 years, yet there were very minor changes made to the offensive coaching staff. I mean, am I to believe the running backs coach and the wide receivers coach are the reason that the offense failed this past season? That's very difficult to believe. So I I look at this and I see Woody talking about, you know, he says disappointment doesn't nearly cover it. Well, didn't you just talk about back in December how, well, it was just the quarterback. We were quarterback away last year. We lost him this year. I mean, you know, these statements don't add up. And at some point, you think Woody would put two and two together. Now, I'm not somebody who thinks the head coach and general manager need to be fired every time the team has a bad season. And that's one of the things I, I get into arguments over sometimes. And it's not always that the head coach and general, general manager are good. It's just sometimes you need more time to figure out whether guys are effective at their job or not. Well, if you think that, like, this is the year where things need to change, what has been happening the years before? What led you, led, led you to believe things need to change? Now, Woody also talked about how we need offense. Offense, it's all offense this offseason. Offense, offense, offense. What's Woody's plan to fix the offense? He talked about how Robert Sala will take a central role on offense. He's going to concentrate on offense. He's got Jeff Albrecht to do the defense. We've got good special teams. It's offense, offense, offense. So the plan to fix the offense is to have Robert Sala like, take the lead role on offense. Now, I will say that you know, through the years, one of the things I, I've never understood is why coaches get siloed to the extent they do in the NFL. It's, a, it's like if you're a defensive guy, people think you know nothing about offense. But to shut down an offense as a defensive coach, you do have to know something about offense. You have to know what their weak points are. You have to know what their strong points are. That's different from saying, like, Robert Sala, this is going to be the answer. We're just going to have Robert Sala focus on the offense. When the real solution is, well, first of all, Aaron Rodgers coming back. And Although I complain a lot about Nathaniel Hackett, we know that Aaron Rodgers returning is going to probably undo a lot of the bad Hackett does because Rodgers is just going to call the offense at the line of scrimmage. But my bigger issue with this is why wasn't there a change made on the offensive coaching staff? Now, we know why, because Rodgers doesn't want Hackett gone. But a 
a guy who lets Aaron Rodgers just do whatever he wants and has adds very little to the discussion. I don't know that that's the, that's the best thing for Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers was pretty vocal. He was not a huge fan of certain aspects of Matt LaFleur's offense. But just because he wasn't happy, that doesn't mean LaFleur's offense had bad ideas. That doesn't mean LaFleur was always wrong in their disagreements. LaFleur helped elevate Rodgers, even though Rodgers wasn't always help, happy. And this is one of my problems with the Jets. It's one of my problems with Woody Johnson. They always try and paper over problems. They always try and work around problems instead of just fixing them. Yeah, like... The off Hackett's not going to be as big of an issue when Rodgers is at quarterback. But what happens if Rodgers gets hurt? Then the offensive coordinator is going to play a significant role again. Because we just saw what happened this year. But going a little deeper, why do we have like someone just to hang out with Aaron Rodgers? Why don't we have somebody who can like bounce ideas off Aaron Rodgers? Somebody who can make Aaron Rodgers better. Somebody who can bring new new concepts to Aaron Rodgers. Who can elevate Aaron Rodgers? Why do we just need someone who's just going to hang around and do, take orders from Aaron? This is the problem. It's a, and Woody's idea seems to be, well, Sal will focus more on the offense. Was well, that going to do anything? Woody Johnson, my my friends, uh, I just don't understand where he comes from sometimes. And this is a, a perfect example of that. You know, he's contradicting himself. He told us in December that everything was great. That we just need the, we just need to get the quarterback back in the lineup. And now he's telling us, well, I was really angry. I was really, I was holding people accountable. It's almost like one of those situations where you didn't do any work and your boss wants to know what you did. So you try and like come up with like some cliches to make it sound like you really did something, but you can't really, you don't really have any work product to point to. That's the, that's what I get. That's the vibe I get when I hear Woody say stuff like this. And it's also true when we talk about the turf at MetLife Stadium. As we continue on this Friday edition of Locked On Jets, we're going to turn our attention to that because Woody had some comments about that. We're, he really did not say much, but he tried to come off saying something. If that doesn't make sense, I'll try and explain a little bit more detail as we continue this Friday edition of Locked On Jets. Today's episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Well, our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class executive Google built-in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. And you should also know that the 2024 Nissan Armada will change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to 8 in first-class luxury and style. Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Again, that's NissanUSA.com. This episode of Locked On Jets is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the number one fantasy sports app in America with more than 3 million members. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. You pick more or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. And as you know, the big game's right around the corner, and Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to turn every game changing moment into 100 times your money. With as little as four correct picks, you can turn $10 into $1,000. And if Patrick Mahomes throws for more than one yard in the big game, you win on prize picks. That's right. Just one yard from Patrick Mahomes. Got to like those odds. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match of up to $100. Again, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL. It's one word with no space L O C K E D O N N F L for a first deposit match of up to $100. And don't forget, if Patrick Mahomes throws for more than one yard in the big game, you win on prize picks. This is the Locked On Jets podcast on this Friday. Woody Johnson, the team owner, spoke last night at the NFL Honors event. He had a lot of things to say to the media. And I I mean, I'm not trying to pick on Woody, but I don't think anything he said gave me confidence that he's got this team moving in the right direction. And that's pretty frequent when we talk about Woody Johnson. It was true when he talked about the backup quarterback situation. Now, we all knew heading into the season that the Jets were in trouble if Aaron Rodgers went down. And it, it will be true next season. The Jets will be in big trouble if Aaron Rodgers goes down four plays into the season again. But we also knew that the Jets did not do a great job preparing themselves for that eventuality. And we also know that Woody did not hold Joe Douglas or Robert Sala accountable at all for the season the Jets just had. Woody made excuses. 
And it, it created an environment where Salah was allowed to make, make excuses. When Douglas was allowed to make excuses. And you can go read that article from The Athletic from last week where Salah was like looking up the records of quarterbacks, uh, of head coaches who had to play the backup quarterbacks. And he was trying to use that to save his job. And I guess it worked. Well, Woody moved on from his team to talk about the turf at his stadium, the MetLife Stadium turf. And MetLife Stadium turf has kind of become famous for being an awful field to play on. So Woody talked about the grass turf. He said, we discuss at least we discuss it at least once a week uh, when it comes to putting down grass at MetLife Stadium. But he also noted that because of how many events are at MetLife, it's not so easy. You know, they may not be able to put grass on the field. For the third time, when you first hear that in your gut, you're like, okay, good. Woody's doing something. But I'll go back to what I just said, closing out the last segment. That's like one of those things where you're at work and you didn't really do anything. So you're just trying to like make it sound like you did something. We have discussions once a week. What does that mean? You're discussing the problem instead of fixing it. It goes back to what, I, what I've been saying all along. The Jets don't address problems. They just try and figure out how to work around problems. Now, I'm not an expert on turf. I, I fully admit that. I've never worked on a grounds crew. I've never studied turf, but here, here's what we do now. The NFLPA, the NFL Players Association, is adamant that more injuries happen on turf fields than on grass fields. And the NFLPA has been pretty vocal the last couple of years that they want NFL stadiums to just have grass fields because they find that more injuries happen on turf. But beyond that, we know the MetLife Stadium turf in particular has a really bad reputation. In fact, the San Francisco 49ers, one of the teams that is playing in the Super Bowl, the only unsuccessful season they've had in the last five years came in 2020, and that was week because was they played a week two game at MetLife Stadium against the Jets, where they suffered a lot of injuries and they blamed the turf. In fact, if you've been following the news this week, the 49ers had issues with their practice field. The, uh, the NFL essentially assigns each team in the Super Bowl a, a, a site where they can practice, and it's usually in the local area. And the 49ers said this turf's a lot like MetLife Stadium. Now, the Jets did change the turf at MetLife Stadium this past year, but of course they suffered a lot of injuries including Aaron Rodgers opening night. Now, look, I can't tell you whether any specific injury would have happened on a grass field versus a turf field. So I'm not going to say like Aaron Rodgers specifically got injured because there was a turf field. Yeah, I can't say any specific injury happened. But over the long run, these things add up. And you can look, and this is this is the key point. It's not just a, it's not just about like one anecdote. Over the long run, you see that if there are more injuries on the on a certain field, then there's probably an issue there. And the Jets have an issue with this turf field. And it, whatever they did to change it last year clearly did not fix things. And I see Woody Johnson saying, we talked about we talk about it every week, but it may not be possible because of how many events are at the stadium. Again, I'm not an expert. And I actually have heard people who are experts on this express skepticism that the Jets will be able to install a turf field at MetLife Stadium. Because MetLife Stadium is only one of only two NFL stadiums that two teams call home. The other is SoFi, field, or SoFi Stadium out in LA where the Chargers and Rams both play at home. And, you know, from what I understand, you know, grass fields can only take so much. When you're talking about 300-pound athletes, when you're talking about the, the guys on the who are play in the NFL, there, there's a lot of wear and tear on a field. So I understand that. And, you know, actually, there's a stadium at the, the Steelers Stadium has been famous through the years of having a bad turf, and they play, like, a lot of high school games there. So, you know, maybe there's something to that. But... Say it, you know, you know, what are you doing talking? What do you mean we're talking about it every week? Either you can put grass field, either you can put a grass field on the stadium or you can't. And if you can, we'll stop talking about it and just do it. And if you can't, explain it. And by the way, Jets are in the NFL. So are the Giants who share the stadium. You guys have as, much, as many resources as, you know, any entity in the world to figure this stuff out. We're talking about you know either putting a better turf field on, which obviously they did not do this past year at Life Stadium, or figuring out a way to you know maintain grass. Like you guys have the re money to do as much research as you want. You have you have the resources to really figure this out. So stop talking about it and go figure something out. Stop stop trying to pretend you did something. And I don't know. Maybe this isn't as big of a deal as what he what he said about the backup quarterback or you know, the coach or GM, but it still annoyed me. And maybe I'm just annoyed by anything Woody says, but there's probably a good reason for that. Because Woody, when he speaks, does not come off as a man in control. He does not come off as a man who's knowledgeable about the game of football. He does not come off as a man who understands how to run an NFL team. And that's probably the reason, and you can, you can say I'm wrong, but 
It's probably the reason Woody's the only owner who hasn't been in the playoffs in 13 years. Anyway, that's all for today's episode. This has been the Lockdown Jets podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Your team every day is our motto. As always, if you enjoy the show, hit the subscribe button where you're watching or listening. To let you'll never miss an episode. If you enjoy the show and are listening on a podcast horse, please give it a five star review. And if you're watching on YouTube and enjoy the show, give this episode a big thumbs up. Helps us out, helps other Jets fans find the podcast. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the Super Bowl. We'll, we'll be back on Monday to talk more Jets.